So now we're getting into the more advanced properties uh, and the theorems about hyperbolic geometry. Uh, if you have any questions along the way, that that's all right. Just please contact me at some point. So I'll put my email address up in the video right here. So I recommend you use that email address, and I'll I'll be uh, eager to reply to you as soon as I can. And in the short term, just please persevere. This is a very interesting subject. And so I'll be continuing where I left off. So the first thing you should know uh, about the 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 specific details of hyperbolic geometry uh, is that this wonderful form of geometry is an example of projectivized space, uh, also known as the projective plane. Okay, now I, I've mentioned this earlier, I, I think in part two, but in reality this is very interesting and I'm going to describe this in detail. Uh, I have made videos on this this general kind of geometry, uh, the projective geometry, in the past. And I will review uh, what the projective plane really is uh, here in, the, in this video in a moment. So, there are many different models for the projective plane. So, so as, as I talk, I'm just gonna... Uh, probably, I'm gonna draw some of these. So, we know that the Euclidean geometry that we're used to just considering the two-dimensional Euclidean geometry. So I guess if we want to say x and y axes, that's all right. It doesn't really matter very much what we call them. So we have just, yeah, basically two axes. And in this Euclidean geometry, we know it extends infinitely in these directions. Uh, well, really, it extends infinitely in every direction. But there are these four main ones that we often consider, I guess, if you want to say north, south, east, and west, uh, east and west. Um, it's really just going along these axes, just the x going along the x and y axes through positive and negative values. But but the point is, it extends infinitely in all directions. And as mathematicians, we can kind of break or alter the rules, actually. Um, that's, I mean, a lot of the time, that's what mathematicians do, actually. They kind of change their framework and see the results, all right? So, so we can kind of alter the rules out of curiosity, and we can therefore view infinity, this abstract concept, as something that is existing in the plane. So, in all directions, it extends infinitely. I'm just going to illustrate that. And if, if infinity if we if we want, we can say that infinity is is a part of this plane, and, and the way we do that we can make it into something much more concrete, and we can actually say, we can define a point at infinity. Now, this might, and this, this is probably amazing to you, this is really quite fascinating when you first read about it, so, we mathematicians can indeed set a point at infinity. Now, note that there there is no definite boundary, necessarily, between the finite and the infinite. Like, you know, how far away is infinity? Well, that's difficult to answer. It's, um, it, it's not like there is a definite boundary that we define. Like, like it goes straight from 1,000 to infinity. No, that's not true, because you can have, you know, you can have 2,000, or 10,000, or 100,000, and, you know, the, the numbers do increase infinitely, and that's... And that's really what our theory of infinity is, but this is different. This is purely theoretical. Um, that's what I'd like to emphasize. So, in some models of the projective plane, in, in some uh, examples, in some instances, there is simply one point at infinity, and only one. Okay, so I'm going to draw this next 
Well, let me just explain this first image. It's kind of like how I've seen it explained before. We basically actually have simply one point at infinity. So all of these four points that you see, they're actually the same point. All right, now that's amazing. That's <laughs> that's truly amazing. And they're really the same point. So uh, speaking topologically, the kind of figure or the, the um, I guess, shape, if you want to think of it as, as a shape, the kind of uh, result of extending this to make a point at infinity is really a sphere, actually. You actually get a sphere. It kind of folds in on itself, and it, we, we get a sphere from this. There's another model where it's actually... Well, it's actually just a circle, and so that's basically a, kind of a simplified version of this projective plane. Uh, so we... I'm going to say zero here. This is just... A model where, like, this is the zero point, a point representing zero. And so let's suppose that every number has its, uh, its corresponding point on this sphere, or on the surface of the sphere, I should say. Um, and that's pretty, that's pretty believable, I guess. Um, we can think of, uh, like, a pair of numbers that are represented as a point on this Euclidean geometry, like, I don't know, 1 comma 1 or something. And that's kind of like what we're doing here, actually. It's, uh, maybe it's a bit more complicated, but we can say, I'm, I'm pretty sure if I understand correctly, because it all, it all wraps in on itself, but basically opposite from zero is this one point at the bottom, which is the point at infinity. We just label that with an infinity sign. That's, that's fine. That's legitimate. And so across... You can think of this as one axis, this kind of equator sort of thing. And then the y-axis, that's just another, you know, that's kind of like a meridian sort of thing. In, so in some models, there is only one point at infinity, while in others there are two or three or even more points at infinity. Um, and that's... That's very interesting. It's very fascinating. So, well, we'll get back to this. This is, I'm just going to box this. This is kind of a specific example of a model of the projective plane. Well, we'll get to that later. Um, it's kind of a unique case, but a more uh, easy to understand case. We have, well, all right, that, that was supposed to be a circle. <laughs> it's not a very neat circle, but all right. Um... Now we have a point here, a point here. I'm just so infinity and zero. They're almost always considered to be, you know, opposite from each other, as you might imagine. Zero and infinity, they they are basically opposites. Um, at least additively speaking. At least I would say so. Yep. All right. And so, how I've seen it in the past, we can have other points. This is kind of like just thinking about it in one dimension. This is like a one-dimensional model. I guess I might write that, actually. One-dimensional model. This is... Well, these are, are kind of two-dimensional. Basically, it's like a... Basically, like a number line, except with the addition of a point at infinity. So, we have one, two... We can just think of it... Just each number has its corresponding point, right? So, this point is at one. It represents one on, like, a, a number line or something. And then two, and we can keep going. We can say three, four, five, and then these these numbers increase. We can say dot dot dot. And then in this geometry, we can think of something infinitely far out, just a, a point at infinity. Point at infinity, we say. And of course, the going the other way is also legitimate. Negative one, negative two, negative three, and it keeps going to infinity. And so this is very interesting. Um, I, mean, I would argue this is this is a manifestation of the beauty of mathematics, um, that we can create our own kind kinds of geometries simply out of curiosity, simply um, imagining new worlds. And yeah, it's it really is pretty interesting. I, I hope you can kind of 
appreciate the, uh, the, the, the power of this abstract force here. Uh, anyway, con continuing the video. So, yeah, this is the description of the projective plane, uh, a kind of geometry that has points at infinity. And in reality, there are numerous frameworks, uh, numerous examples of the projective plane. We can consider what we call the real projective plane, or the complex projective plane. This is what I consider this one to be, and, and well, you can see my other videos more on that. We're, um, what we really should be moving on to the hyperbolic geometry, and that's the next thing on the list, hyperbolic geometry, that's another example of projective geometry. That's what I wanted to stress, alright? So, so yeah, um, getting back to hyperbolic geometry, and one last thing, I just want to, I want to make sure I say, for more on the projective plane, my, my, which is my favorite geometry, Please visit my YouTube channel and my earlier videos where I will eventually discuss, well, I'll actually bring in some calculus that we can do to explore different functions in the projective plane. Uh, so yeah, that, that should be fun, but I digress, and we should return to the hyperbolic space. So surely you recall from part two of this trilogy, uh, when we measured angles of a hyperbolic triangle, and the total was very, very small. It was it was actually less than two degrees in the model that we used. Well, you might ask, well, why would we uh, spend time learning about the projective plane if you know if if it didn't. Uh, benefit us here um so and you know following that you you might ask more importantly in this model of hyperbolic space so i think i've i've quoted this as the, the beltrami klein model and that's where we have a circle and you know we can have points and uh line segments and figures inside the circle and, you know, lines look bent. Well, you've seen part two, surely you remember. So you might ask, what if the vertices of our triangle were at infinity, right? Uh, you know, I've just said hyperbolic space is projectivized, which means that, if you think about it, we have points at infinity. And you might be able to infer by now, uh, the points at infinity to which I'm referring are indeed the points on the boundary of this Klein model. Now, the program I was using in the last part, uh, which is called non-Euclid, is actually simply simply a model which cannot exactly have points at infinity exactly. So it could only basically approximate our ideal hyperbolic triangle. But when the points are truly at infinity, we have amazing properties of this ideal hyperbolic triangle. By the Gauss-Bonnet theorem, 